Guys, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the bottom splash cover off. It's got a couple 10 millimeter bolts and a couple body clips to be able to see the transmission lines and how we're gonna route the new lines and the new cooler. So I'll do that right now step by step. So this is the feed line. This feeds the pressure to the radiator. And this is the return. So the feed line feeds to the radiator cooler at the bottom. And the way the transmission pumps fluid is it pumps it from the bottom and it comes out through the top. And the reason Nissan did that is because if it did it the other way, it would be a waterfall and the transmission fluid wouldn't cool down. It would just bubble up inside the radiator. So it goes Pressurized from the bottom comes out through the top and then so the top line is this one and I have that one hooked up here To a fitting It's a 3 8 barb fitting two 3 8 ends to another 3 inch 3 8 hose This is a, a gates hose made for transmission fluid It's made to take the oil the viscosity and the heat of the oil so transmission fluid goes in through there and the radiator does one of two jobs. It cools down the fluid, but it also warms it up a little bit because the fluid can't be ice cold. It needs to be a little bit warm because if the fluid's too hot, it could blow the transmission. If the fluid's too cold, same thing, it could blow the transmission. So the job of the radiator cooler is it does two jobs. It warms up the fluid when the transmission is cold and it also keeps the transmission fluid warm when it's hot but these cars have the defect that the transmission unfortunately it's tiny because it's a cvt they designed it to be compact it doesn't hold much fluid so what happens is that the fluid the little fluid that's in there gets hot crazy fast crazy crazy fast more than any other car i've seen so the radiator can't keep up so to solve that what we do is we put an auxiliary transmission cooler so that it does two things the transmission can now hold more fluid capacity because now you have more fluid going through the new cooler and also the airflow from the fans and from the wind while you're driving cools the fins of the transmission the transmission fluid through the new cooler so you got basically what you have here is a water to oil cooler what it would be called and then you have an air to oil heat exchanger. So the fluid from the radiator comes through here, through the bottom, same concept. Just go through the bottom, that way it comes out through the top. If you do it, the, if you do it opposite, what's gonna happen is it's gonna, bu it's gonna bubble up and waterfall inside here, and then get air bubbles trapped inside the transmission. It's gonna foam the transmission fluid, and then it could blow the pump, blow up the transmission, cause more damage and harm. So you need to make sure you're getting these lines the right way exactly how i'm explaining in this video if not this is going to be counterproductive to the reason why we're doing this so the fluid comes in through here fan blows it off pulls it off comes out through the top and through the top you see another gates hose comes all the way around all the way through the chassis i make sure i found a good hole where it didn't pinch it where it's clear it's not going to shake and rub and cut through the fan or anything crazy and if you see here, it comes in perfectly right there at the top, right there, perfectly. And it goes to the return fitting on the transmission right there. So what we got here is a really inexpensive way to save your transmission and fix one of the most biggest problems with Altima's made from 2007 and up. And a lot of Nissan Versas, a lot of Nissan Rogues, a lot of Nissan Muranos and Jukes. The Juke Turbo has this huge issue, but they, they make a better, they make a different kit for those cars. You just have to do a little bit of research. We might make a video later on how to do this same 
fix for those kind of vehicles. So, with that being said, this is this is a really cheap way to save you thousands of dollars, lots of headache, constant fighting with the dealer on warranty and them trying to avoid your warranty and all this and that. Nissan actually came out with their own version of this, but we've seen their cooler. And my opinion on it is it's tiny, it, do, it does help. I'm not putting down on Nissan. They did a good job by coming out with it, but it is tiny. I feel like this cooler here, it's, it's huge. It's almost half the size of the condenser. It fits a truck. If you look at it, it's pretty big for a transmission cooler. And I've been driving this Altima for a long time, no issues with the transmission, shifting, nothing. We actually use this car as a loaner car to loan out to customers so they can use it when we're fixing their cars. And they go out of town, they go everywhere with this car. Everywhere. So the last thing we want as a shop is for our own company vehicle to be breaking down. So we bought the, we bought the Altima, started noticing that these cars, once they drive for a period of time, the transmission becomes sluggish. It might slip a little bit and then grab. It does all kind of weird stuff. And we only notice that it happens after long periods of driving and for an extended amount of time. So I've even read on forums that some people have these issues without even extended driving. And I've read on forums that some people, what they do to solve this issue is they change the transmission fluid once every three months, once every six months, like something ridiculous like that, which transmissions don't need to be serviced that much. I would only recommend maybe once a year change the transmission fluid but I'm hearing about stories people change the transmission fluid once every six months because of this issue and if you add it up the transmission fluid on these cars is really expensive it's almost $20 a port and it takes five ports four ish five ports so you're having to do that every six months plus pay someone to do it unless you do it yourself you know and then it still doesn't guarantee that it's gonna that it's gonna like forever fix the transmission issues on these cars so that's why I recommend you taking it one step forward, one step extra, giving the transmission heat exchanger, the additional, and changing the fluid at least once a year, once every two years, and you should be fine. You know, and obviously checking it once a month to make sure you're not low on fluid, to check the color of it, all those things, you know, real maintenance, you know, that we're supposed to do on our cars, just to make sure your fluids are all good. The way it's mounted is it has these zip ties that go through the condenser and the radiator. I tried going from the outside in and I found it easier just to go from the inside through the fan blades and poke them out. And you can see they poke out and the tip is kind of pointy so it just goes through the condenser. Really simple, really, really simple way to just mock it up and hang it. It's not heavy, you know, it doesn't hold that much fluid to where it's crazy heavy. The hoses aren't that heavy. It just needs a few zip ties to hold it up, that's it. I'll lower the car now and I'm going to show you guys what it looks like from the top because from the top you can barely even tell that it's, it's on there. So it doesn't look ridiculous or anything. Alright, so from the top, you can't really tell that there's anything been changed, modified or anything on this car. That's the only thing you can notice is that the silver cooler in the front. So we did a test on where to mount the cooler, what's the best place for cooling. And you want to mount the cooler the lowest position of the condenser and it's because of basic physics heat goes up cold goes down the hot ac refrigerant goes to the condenser it comes in hot through the top fans cool it off it comes out liquid cool liquid to the bottom so you want to mount it closest to the bottom of the condenser you can but you don't want to mount it lower than condenser because then you can drag stuff on the road and bust it so you want to mount it like the same level of the condenser maybe just like a little bit up but it, you want it to be in that lower area of the condenser radiator area if you can see here through the grill the radiator the cooler stops like right at the bottom of the grill if you look at it if you could... and it's just a real simple fix to keep these cars lasting a really long time real simple upgrades real simple fix if you don't think you have the ability to do it yourself and you don't understand what the instructions we've explained in the video you can always bring the car to us and give us a call 
shoot us an email, shoot us a text message. If you have a question, if you're local and you want to stop by the shop, we're willing to help you out. And if you want us to do the whole job, we can do the whole job. Just give us a call. We'll give you a quote. To say, I hope everyone found this informative and got a lot of, a lot of good information and learned a lot from this video because there isn't a lot of information on it. There really isn't. So I really hope it helps and hope everyone has a good day and enjoys their autumn as much as we do. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. Oh.